In our last video, we looked at one of the inner urban stops in St. Clair, which was the Oakland Hotel. And uh, I told you then that uh, there's a few more things I want to show you regarding the Oakland Hotel, and I'll do that in this video. Uh, the first thing we want to look at is what did these guests see when they looked out their window? The guests on the east side of the hotel, uh, facing the river, had a wonderful view. They could look out their windows, and everyone had a, a river view. And they saw a, a scene similar to this. They could look over at the dock area and also the river area and watch the steamers go by. If you were a guest on the west side of the hotel, this is the view you would have had. You would have been looking out at the terrace lawns of the Oakland and uh, looking at the cottages that were across the street from the Oakland. Since our last video, I had the privilege of talking to the owners of one of these cottages and realized that this cottage that you see on the left here, as we zoom into it, is actually the cottage that we looked at when we were looking at the current view in our last video this cottage right here. And if you go two doors down uh, north of this cottage, you come across this cottage here. And I didn't realize at the time that this was a cottage because that tower has been partially removed. So today you can view those same cottages that the guests of the Oakland had uh, from the west side of the hotel uh, over a hundred years ago. And those cottages are still there. The one there on the left, the, the green one, the current one, of course, would be the one in the black and white on the left. And that one below it on the right shows which goes with that one. And so those two cottages are still there today. And they look like this right here in the corners. I thought that was pretty interesting. Let's see what it says about the cottages on this rate chart here. Cottages are to be let furnished, price $250 for the season or for one year. Housekeeping not permitted. In other words, uh, you couldn't be cooking in a kitchen because they didn't have a kitchen. They probably wanted you to eat at the hotel. Electric call bells connect to the office of the hotel. Cottages are distant 400 to 900 feet from the main entrance of the hotel. In other words, across the street. Let's see how this compares with the hotel rates. You can see here that the daily rate in the busy season is $3.50. And then you can read the, the others for yourself. But this was quite competitive uh, with the better hotels. The Harrington uh, had rooms going for $4 a night. So uh, it looks like the top price there was three fifty. So very competitive. And they offered much more than the Harrington did. The Oakland also had uh, this building here, which was called a villa. The villa was almost like a small hotel. They had uh, furnished rooms for $1.50 a day or $30 a month, and all the rooms were large enough to accommodate three people comfortably. Electric call bells were in every room that connected to the hotel office. And this was uh, pretty close to the uh, hotel, too. It says within 400 feet. I'm just not sure which way. It was definitely less expensive than the main building. So what do the folks at the Oakland do for recreation? Well, I'm glad you asked because there were several things they did. Let's take a look at a few of them. If you arrived by steamer, one of the first things you saw other than the hotel was the Oakland Boathouse. This is what the Oakland said about their boathouse. The boathouse is a handsome structure situated at the river's edge near the Oakland Wharf. Fully equipped with rowboats, sailboats, and fishing tackle of all kinds, which can be obtained together uh, with uh, oarsmen and guides to the favorite fishing grounds so numerous in this vicinity. The river current being less than two and a half miles per hour, sailing, rowing, and sculling are among the popular recreations. Another article about the boathouse is this. A special attraction will be the tasteful and inviting boathouse and pavilion within two minutes walk of your room, in which will be found supplied with rowboats and sailing yachts of sizes and styles to suit all tastes. To sit on one of these comfortable pavilion benches with such a view as there opens before you, with the blue waters of the St. Clair and the river cool breeze for your near companions, is a summer day pleasure which the presence of a congenial human friend or a favorite book may enhance but which even without either of these, 
is most delightful and invigorating. The building you see right next to the boathouse was the shooting gallery. I don't know if they had a shooting gallery inside like you see at carnivals or not, but I know there was some serious shooting done with clay pigeons that they provided at the hotel as well. So I don't know if they uh, put them out over the, the water and they shot that way, which I would imagine they did, hoping they didn't sink any boats. But uh, they had shooting for those that were interested. Around the Oakland Hotel there were groves and they had trails that went through these groves, not hiking trails because ladies didn't hike in those days. It was more of a meandering trail. They just meandered through the grove and there were benches along the way, there were swings along the way, places to stop and rest. And if you went to the south, you would come upon uh, this picture right here. At Gregor's Point, which gave you a beautiful view of the river and uh, the steamers that went by. And if you went to the north through the grove, you would come to the Oakland Clubhouse. The front part is actually the clubhouse part, but in the rear, they had uh, more recreation for the guests of the Oakland Hotel. You could uh, go bowling in the back, and this bowling alley was also open for, to women, which Remember, this is 1800, so uh, quite a progressive thing there. We talked about a billiard room in the Oakland Hotel, but there was a second billiard room that was connected to the clubhouse as well. On the western side of the hotel, there was a place for the ladies to play croquet, and the men too as well. And uh, also, they could play lawn tennis there. So many fun things to do with the Oakland. But what do we do with those pesky little kids we brought with us? Well, the answer is the Somerville School, which was located near the Oakland Hotel. This is what the Oakland uh, Hotel said about the Somerville School. This might be a fine opportunity for permanent Oakland guests to put their children at school as day scholars during the whole or a part of their stay at St. Clair. They would hardly find a better advantage of this kind at any educational institution in the country. And they didn't forget about the adults either. It said Oakland guests might sometimes find it pleasant and advantageous to attend the special spring course at Somerville, arranged to take place during the last 10 weeks of each school year, and which for the summer of 1882, according to the published prospectus, comprised classes in ancient history, brief reviews of the history of literature and the fine arts, botany, and lectures upon the European art centers with privileges of the tourist class. So they had something for everybody. West of Front Street, they had a uh, livery where you could go horseback riding or you could uh, get a carriage that you could uh, ride along the river, a great view going toward uh, St. Clair, or perhaps go all the way to Port Huron and uh, spend some time there. And this drawing shows that uh, view you would have had, but there's also this photograph as well showing pretty much the same view. Then for the children, uh, you could get a Chetland pony to ride at delivery, and, uh, or you could get a cart and a pony and take the kids for a ride. So they, they had something to keep the kids busy as well. And if you enjoyed racing, the Riverside Driving Park wasn't very far from the hotel, and you could take your carriage over there and spend the afternoon and enjoy that. Or if you're inclined to go south, you could go along the river and take a little trip to Marine City on this road. Yes, the Oakland Hotel was a grand place. I was a little disappointed I couldn't find a picture of one of the guest rooms, but I did find a description. Here's what it says. The elegance, too, of these furnishing arrangements fully equal their variety. A more handsomely furnished hotel is probably not to be found within the state of Michigan. The carpets are body brussels. The mantles, as well as the top of the center tables and dressing bureaus, are rich Tennessee marble. The beds throughout are furnished with the best spring and hair mattresses, while attached to the guest chamber are roommate closets. Today, the Oakland Hotel doesn't exist. Note where the boathouse is there on the left. And then notice this road here where you see the carriages going back and forth. That's Oakland Avenue. Let's see what it looks like today. 
On the right, the hotel, on the left, the boathouse, and in the middle, Oakland Avenue. And this is the current view. This is where, uh, about where the boathouse would have been, except that it tears down uh, to the water. It wasn't built up so much back then. And then across the street on this side would have been the hotel itself. Today there's nothing left of the hotel except for one thing. And that's right here. This is the uh, Salutaris uh, plant. Not the original one, it was a hotel, about the same location, however. Uh, the original one burnt down, they built another one, and that burnt down. And they built this block building. And it still houses the mineral well that uh, supplied the bathhouses at the Oakland Hotel. It used to be Angler Rod and Sports, but now uh, it's called uh, Angler's Outfitters. And do you want to guess where they keep that live bait? Well, maybe you guessed it. They keep it in the mineral well. There's one other connection that you can see today that was connected to the Oakland Hotel, and that was uh, its owner, uh, William Hopkins. Uh, he owned the Oakland Hotel, and when he stayed there, he stayed in this modest cottage. But when he was living in the city, uh, his home wasn't quite so modest. His, uh, his home was the one in the foreground. The one in the uh, background there would be his brother's. William Hopkins' house can still be seen today in St. Clair. This is the house here. You can see uh, it's missing part of the tower. But other than that, it's in pretty good shape because uh, the way I understand it today is a bed and breakfast uh, known as the William Hopkins Manor. So that's one other connection to the Oakland Hotel. In the 1900s, mineral baths were no longer in vogue and it eventually led to the closing of the Oakland Hotel in 1911. In 1915, there was a fire in the building that uh, severely damaged it, and it was eventually uh, tore down in the 1920s. But let's not remember it like this. Let's remember it like this here. Let's remember it in its prime. And remember, we just stopped here for a little bit. We've got to get back on the inner urban car and head toward Port Sharon. So let's get our ticket from the office, the inner urban office in the hotel. Well, then we'll go out front of the building and we'll pick up the inner urban and hop on and see what else there is to see. All right, now we're heading north from the Oakland Hotel and we're coming into the town of St. Clair. This picture looks like it might have been taken in the late 1800s. Uh, the road is still a dirt road. Pretty good uh, picture of the inner urban though. And in this photo, you can see them at the St. Clair Station, and they're loading the folks up onto the interurban. Here's a color postcard that shows the west side of Front Street in St. Clair, and it shows the interurban coming. I think the artist took some liberties. I doubt very seriously if that interurban was the bright yellow. This photo here would have been the early 1900s. Here you can see the early automobile, it looks like a Model T, and also the interurban right alongside of it. This photo here is probably the earliest one we have of the inner urban going through St. Clair. I almost didn't get it in a picture. Just north of St. Clair is our next stop, which is the Somerville Hotel. The Somerville Hotel was uh, built in 1887 and the Oakland was built in 1881, so it looked like we were trying to give them some competition. And the excursion boats also stopped at this hotel as well as the interurban. They also had some of the same amenities that the Oakland had. They had the mineral baths there as well as some of the recreational things to do. Check this fellow out and the maintenance crew mowing the lawn with an old-fashioned manual uh, reel type mower. That had to be a job with the size of the lawn they have there. And here's a postcard of the Somerville. At first I thought this group out front was some type of military group uh, with rifles, but now it looks like it may be the maintenance group with shovels in their hands. Can't really tell. One more, a little bit of competition for Port Huron. This accident here between two inner urban cars took place one and a half miles north of St. Clair. Two employees and two passengers were killed and five employees and 22 passengers were seriously injured. There was no block signaling on the line and for crossing trains on signal line section, there was a reliance on the timetable. 
and additional train orders that were telephoned at irregular intervals along the line. At every switch, uh, or at most switches anyway, they had a telephone, and the conductor was supposed to tell uh, the dispatcher that they were running behind or on time or uh, ahead of time. And they relied a lot on that, but I, I still don't have, I, I have a hard time understanding how in broad daylight they don't see each other coming. It's not like somebody's pulling up a driveway, there's a track and that's it. Interurban crashes were more common than you would think. In this picture here, two urban, uh, interurban cars crashed into each other. Over 40 people were killed. Each motorman thought that the other one was going to turn off on a switch, and neither of them did. Most accidents over the inner urban involved other vehicles, such as this car here trying to uh, go across uh, before the inner urban passed and didn't quite make it. Car versus the inner urban, the car is going to lose every time. An inner urban versus a steam engine, the inner urban is going to lose every time. And it seems like I learned something in the school where two objects couldn't occupy the same space at the same time. Perhaps these motormen didn't learn that. Now that you feel completely safe to continue our trip, our next stop is going to be Marysville. And here you can see the stop is right next to the post office. And finally we reach our destination, Port Turin. Here is the interurban coming over the Military Street Bridge. Here's a little closer look at it right outside the bank. Originally, the inner urban final stop was at the courthouse, but eventually uh, it went up to Eronia Beach, and then even further than that, they went up to Kiwaden Park. Uh, that would be the last stop, and they would turn around and come back from there. One of the things that Port Huron had that the other resorts didn't have is Lake Huron. They had the wonderful cottages that you could rent by the summer, and many did. And then they could bring the complete family there and the kids could play out on the sand and the, and the father and mother could take the walk in the sand and the cool breezes that came in off the lake was actually cooler than it was in St. Clair uh, River on the Oakland. So it was a very enjoyable time and that was one of the uh, big draws because they uh, had people coming from out of state, Ohio uh, and uh, Missouri uh, to spend the summer there. So it wasn't the Oakland, but it was pretty nice. In our next video, we'll see what happened to the inner urban cars, and, and maybe we'll have some time to see what else there is in Port Sharon to look at. It's been a while since we've been on the streets of Port Sharon, but bear with me. Now we're almost done with the interurban and the streetcars. I found it fascinating. So there. <laughs> I hope you did too.